this is Greg from Force RC, and today we've got James Haley and Steve Petralo here with us to walk through their Theory Type W uh, setups from the world. So, uh, first off, both of you guys, congratulations for a uh, job well done. James took first, and Steve took second at the World Championship in Hawaii a couple weeks ago. So, uh, first off, why don't you guys tell us a little bit about the event? Yeah, it's uh, you know Hawaii was a was the first time that there were about thirty seven countries that got together to race. Um, and this was kind of a, a year-long process of vetting the pilots, going through their na their drone nationals, uh, and getting everybody to Hawaii. So it was definitely a challenging way to get everyone in one spot to sh to kind of see who's the best. Um, the event took about a week. We got there on a on a Saturday, left on a Monday, um, and it was you know it was several days of racing, uh, a lot of qualifying, a lot of practice, and definitely a lot of preparation leading into it on everyone's part, not just us. Um, not a bad place to fly either. Huh? Not a bad place to fly either. <laughs> when we're not racing, we were still flying, having a great time enjoying the sights and cliff diving and snorkeling or whatever you, whatever you uh, can possibly imagine to do in Hawaii. Nice. There's tons to do there. Uh, overall, an awesome event, a very exciting, cool racetrack for sure. Awesome yeah. place to fly there at Kualoa Ranch. And uh, uh, yeah, we had a blast. Alright, so I. Uh, Today you're going to walk us through your setups for both of your world planes, um, just to say what's in there. Uh, a lot of the stuff you can actually get on Force, we'll put links in the description below, but um, let us know what it looks like. Yeah, go for it, James. Let's jump into yeah. the power stuff and um, we'll go from there. Yeah, so the biggest thing, uh, we want we need to go faster based on nationals. We knew we were more agile, but our top speed definitely uh, wasn't there in nationals. So. We've gone to a bigger motor. We're using a Scorpion 2221-12, which is a 2480 kV motor. Um, so we're swinging an APC 475 by 475. Uh, we tried a lot of different props, and this is the most reliable prop uh, for the performance. Um, you can run an APC 475 by 55, but the motors are going to get a lot hotter. Uh, the flight time is going to go down. Um, we ran a little, basically, a motor uh, mount here for a heat sink just to kind of keep it a little cooler. Um, to run this, we're pulling about 40 to 42 amps consistently, um, wide open. So we had to go to a nice 50 light. I, actually, it's not nice anymore. It's a Phoenix light uh, 50. Uh, so just a standard airplane setup in there. <clears throat> um, one big thing is, though, you'll see the dual XT60s here. We went to a two 4S1000s in parallel. Uh, so technically we're running a 4S2000, um, and this is to get us the flight time. So our flight time on this wide open is about two and a half minutes, uh, which is pretty much a race. Uh, we did an air start this time, so full flight time, you know, we can do about three minutes on a 4S2000, feeling comfortable. Uh, any longer than that, and we'll have to go to a bigger battery. Um, just move the receiver forward, running a standard 3W uh, code in here. No changes to gains or anything. Um, that's pretty much it, power setup wise. But it's uh, it rips, so it uh, worked really well. Yeah. Uh, oh, now, how much testing did you go through? You know, did you try a few different configurations to, to get to this? Well, I knew. Uh, yeah, actually, Scorpion was really great. Uh, got a bunch of different motors from them to try. Um, first one I thought was going to be sweet uh, ended up being way too hot. So never would have made flight time or current or anything. Um, it, melt it, it melted everything, melted the motor mounts. Um, so ended up here at this setup. Uh, we tried probably 30 different props. Um, a lot of speed tests, current testing. Um, not really much static thrust, doesn't really give you much because it unloads so much in the air. Uh, but the biggest thing, uh, actually watched a lot of national footage, uh, checked how fast everybody else was going, did a lot of calculations to figure out how fast we needed to go, and mapped out all the course multiple times at Google Maps, and figured out how long it would take us to go at the speeds we were going uh, right before we left. So uh, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of testing, and at least thinking we knew what we were doing. Nice. <laughs> So on top of the power stuff, um, we did a lot of aerodynamics to change the airframe. Uh, the biggest you know, thing you see right away on obviously, uh, besides the sweet paint scheme, uh, <laughs> you know, we, we took some effort into cleaning up the airframe. So we did, you can notice James Plane After the Worlds has this tape ripped off here, but we had, uh, we had tape running down each seam of the aircraft. So whether it was a servo or the seam where the wings plug together on the theory, um, or even on the bottom of the airframe, if you want to flip it over real quick, James. 
Um, you'll, there was not tape on it now, but we had tape covering you know, where, the, where the mount holes are for the wing tabs. We have tape covering our extra satellite. Um, there was also something we added to the airframe, so we figured we're going to be going pretty long range, so it wouldn't hurt to have an extra satellite on board, so we added that to the airframe. Uh, on the top side, we've got 3D printed uh, aileron, basically uh, control rod covers, um, and that just cleans up the air coming over the, the control surface. Uh, we didn't run wipers here. We did have an airframe with wipers, meaning like a, a piece of cardboard or something that covers up this gap. But in the worlds, we didn't actually end up running it on the race plan. I didn't want to mess up my sweet things again. Yeah, it was, <laughs> and it really was a it was a a looks decision. We didn't want to mess up the scheme, which is kind of silly. But the backups did have the wipers and. If we did it again next year, I think we'll integrate those into the scheme so we don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Um, we also went to this nose cone in the front, so we actually have a, um, a 3D printed camera hole cover. I don't, I don't really know what you would call it, but essentially it just prevents air from going into the airframe and ballooning up uh, inside the canopy. That being said, we had a plan to, um, to build hatch. an entire rear hatch for it, and we, we actually did. We, did. we built one, we molded them, we 3D printed a, a negative shell, basically, and then took the existing canopies, cut them, heated them up in the oven, and pressed them down over, uh, which actually made the mold, because the batteries stick up a little bit further in this one, mm -hmm. and so we actually did that. And I think that was our end plan, but we never ended up doing it. Uh, I lost them. We, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was really the, the, James has said, I don't know where they are, and I think I put them with my wife's stuff, which is then now in the trash can. So they're in <laughs> Hawaii somewhere, uh, but we'll make them again for the next race. But yeah. we ended up, did, we kept the front hatch, and this just cleans up the air here, but once it gets over here, it's pretty dirty again. Um, I'm sure we would have picked up a little more speed, but at the end of the day, we didn't really need it. So that was some of the aero stuff. Um, I forget what else we've done. The biggest thing too is we uh, we had to run certain uh, VTXs there, so we yeah. ran the FXT Musketeer. It's an adjustable power output. Um, I love the VTX. It's got super crystal clear video. Um, being able to adjust between 25 milliwatt, uh, 200 and 600 is really handy. So 200 at the race, but if we want to go out and fly, you know, anywhere around Hawaii, bump it up really easily. Also. It's got pit mode, so if you need to do something and you know work on it, so you just leave the VTX off. Uh, the other thing is we ran VAS antennas, um, the air screws and the, the race spec stuff. So we actually um, undid the heat shrink around them, uh, which you can kind of see here. And then we actually just wound it up in there. So it's actually anything that you know was any drag at all, we hid inside the canopy. So it just sat right in there underneath the canopy and uh, you know just cleaned it up as much as possible um, yeah. but yeah they served us really well uh, didn't ever even need our backups or anything yeah I mean, some of the questions i got afterwards were you know obviously what radio did you use dx18 both of us flew the 18 g2 yeah. uh, what kind of speeds were you hitting uh, you know on a windy day our downwind passes were in the 150 range oh wow. our, our average you know up one down one was probably at 130. 130 130 so oh. Yeah. Um, it's a very fast airframe, only pulling, like James said, 40 to 45 amps, but we're doing about 770 watts, which the limit at Worlds was 850 watts. Um, so we're right up there. My airframe was actually clocked in on the final race at 730 or 720 watts. So James had a little bit more speed on me, of course. Um, I'm sure he custom picked that motor just because of that reason. No. But yeah, he had a little extra power than I did, but again, it was it all comes down to flying. Speed only makes... Uh, some of the difference it really comes down to how fast you can cut the corners and uh, having that the gyro system on board too really did make a difference in, in a situation like that where it was allowed in competition i think it'll be something that is more accepted by all the pilots soon um, but after people have flown it they've said wow this makes a big difference in racing so yeah. uh, launch mode is makes huge. a huge difference you know unfortunately a lot of people couldn't get off you know on launch and crashed on launch which you never want to see because then mm. you know just another reason to run, you know, a launch mode that allows you to, you know, at least race and mm -hmm. fly. So takes that out of the um, really, you know, A3X allows you to pull harder, um, have a farther back CG. So you can, you know, on this it would have been we flew actually a non-gyro mode just for tuning and stuff, um, but it helps a lot. Pull straight every time. Yeah, the course was a. Uh you know, it was it was a, had an implement in it. So the start gate was an immediate pull, 180 around, which basically to make a U-turn, but for an implement. So you pull full elevator back, roll out to the right, and then you do a slalom. And uh, you know, without we could have, we, everyone did it right, but the, you you get a much cleaner line when you, you know you can pull straight every time. 
uh, and bank around the slalom, just bump, bump, bump without worrying about stalls or flicking out or anything like that. Yep. Um, it's it's definitely a helpful thing, and I think it'll become more of a popularity in racing as people understand that it doesn't affect speed or performance; it only enhances your flying. Now, I noticed there was you had several pretty windy days there. Yeah. So what what was it like, you know, flying and adjusting to the wind when you had such gusts? It, like if you've ever ridden a wooden roller coaster and been <laughs> beat up on a wooden, that's exactly what it felt like in the goggles. <laughs> uh, it was uh, constant, just shaking, uh, violent shaking. But you're flying so fast, where you're just trying to win the race, yeah. you don't really care. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm sure if somebody was riding along with you, they'd be like, "Oh, I'm gonna throw up." But yeah. it's it <laughs> crosswind. Messed with it the most, you know, in and down, into the wind and downwind, it was pretty clean. Yeah. But, um, well, and not only that, we were flying in and around trees and over the tops of trees, so there was various different vortices hitting the airplane. When you climb over a tree, you know, just get smacked from a yeah. different direction that you're not expecting. Mm -hmm. It's just, whoa, okay, and you've got to adjust for it. But at the end of the week, I think I didn't even care. That didn't yeah. matter anymore. Launch, uh, launching it, because uh, unfortunately, the way it was set up, we were launching downwind or yeah. with a crosswind, and, you know, tr Tent right behind us, so it wasn't the most ideal launching situation. So that was what made me the most nervous. Was if I got out of the launch, we were all good. Yeah, and every time we did, we never had yep. a couple of sketchy launches, but <laughs> nowhere near what some of the other guys had. And, and again, that's all attributed to having safe and AS3 X on board from the Theory W. Now, when you were actually building it, your modified version of it, did you have to adjust the center of gravity at all, or with AS3 X, you really didn't have to? No, Watch no, we much. just, uh, it's got the dimples on the bottom for CG, so we try to stay relatively right there. We're actually a little bit behind it, um, just because we couldn't get the batteries any far forward, and uh, that we couldn't really fit 1300s in there and feel comfortable with it, and so the 1000s fit perfectly, a little bit of a foam cut out, but everything worked perfect with the 1000s, so okay. kept it as light as possible while still maintaining an acceptable CG. Now, did you need to make any other modifications to the foam or everything other than that? Is uh, wings are all stock. Uh, we cut a little bit, uh, about two millimeters out on each side to fit the 1000s. A little bit back here, I think. Uh, yeah, we cut a little bit out here to fit the bigger ESC. Uh, but other than that, just some hot glue and away you go. Yeah, it's amazing how many modifications you can make with a little exacto knife and some hot glue on a foam wing. <laughs> I mean, these are just hot glued on. So. Yeah. And we'll make those we'll make those files available. They're so on Thingiverse people, already. Oh, they are. So yeah. you go to Thingiverse, and I think it's another Blade RC Thingiverse. You can download the the prints if you want to clean yeah, up your airframes. So um, we'll have a link to those in the description as well. Yep. yep. But yeah. All right. Well, thanks a lot for the time, no and, and again, congratulations, to both of you guys. Thank you. Really appreciate it. appreciate walking through the setup with us. Yeah. Man. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Thanks for watching.